Hey guys, my best bro is Jesus. I am over here laughing my butt off because I'm in like two or three takes of this. But anyways, we are going to have a little Bible study. Just uh, you, me, Jesus, and we're going to hop into this. Give you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, why I haven't been posting all that much and it's just simply because I haven't had all that much motivation to um, and I kind of just didn't really have any kind of desire to post videos and um, I was spending a lot of time uh, just growing myself and then also a lot of I guess personal stuff in my life that would uh, come up and um, just staying focused on that but really God has kind of drawn me in and he's like, oh, we got to get, we got to get back into this and, uh, actually make a schedule about it. So every Tuesday is, we're going to be posting up a new video. And, um, the whole purpose of that is just to share revelation with you guys and, you know, overflow. Like we're all created to overflow out of the things that he tells us. Um, the scripture says that whatever I tell you in the secret, I want you to basically get up on the rooftop and yell it to the entire world. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, of course, but, um, you know, that is the kind of thing that he wants for us. It, like, he wants to tell us these amazing things and, you know, really help and encourage us. And then he wants us to go out and encourage many others. And, well, the platform that I can do that in is obviously YouTube where I can affect more than just the people in my sphere of influence uh, in the, I guess, physical realm, not this virtual realm, but um, like YouTube is, I guess, virtual, and but I have a sphere of influence that is physical. But now I'm kind of doubling that because I am bringing in YouTube into this and all of you guys that watch these videos. So, uh, basically today I did not really have anything planned, um, besides talking about this, a couple stories that Jesus taught, um, and basically I just want to overflow out of my heart because there's one thing that, um, uh, really just kind of convicts me. Uh, every single, every single time I think about teaching or getting up in front of people and preaching a, a message or the gospel, and it's, you never want to get in the word for that purpose. You never want to get in the word to be like, oh, I gotta get a topic to preach about. But you get in the word to, to spend time with Jesus and to have a fantastic time and just to be with him. And get to know him and your life will overflow you know your testimony a testimony I'm sorry your testimony uh, the message that you preach it'll all overflow out of that relationship that that you have with God and the Father and Jesus the Holy Spirit so it's not something that um, that I want or I guess I want for any it's not something God wants for us to turn into a I gotta get a message out kind of thing looking looking through the word trying to get a message <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh, I have just noticed reading through the gospel about how the majority of the gospel is spent talking about how Jesus is, of course, going to die for us. And, well, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I guess misspoke. But, like, the majority of the gospel, Jesus, he comes as 100% man and uh, also 100% God. And he does this, and it comes through, like, the, the way that we all came through, the birth of a woman. And he did it so we can have a relationship with God. You know, we can't have a relationship with God if we're not clean. 
and this is something that they were missing before. There was there was a veil, there was like a brick wall between between the people and God is because they were unclean and they were trying to get themselves clean from the blood of bulls and goats and uh, the law. And that was never going to clean them. And so you have that aspect of, you know, Jesus on the earth. But he also, like, why he was on the earth, he he was pretty important. Like, he made, uh, made it seem pretty important that we are to go out and preach the gospel. And I'd like... He's always saying that he's going to come back and we um, should have, like, these, the people around us. We should be taking them with us, essentially. I, what I'm trying to get at here is, how about this? I'm just going to read the Bible because I'm getting my words all tripped up. And uh, we'll go from there. This is all unedited. Uh, mainly because I don't know how to do all that and uh, all the videos in the future will not be edited either just because it's simple and we can just make it easy anyways so we're gonna start at Luke chapter 19 uh, this is verses 11 so why are they were listening to, uh, to these things Jesus went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they assumed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately as soon as he reached the city. So yeah, a little backstory. Uh, all the Jews essentially thought Jesus was here to uh, start a new kingdom and overflow the, uh, overthrow the current kingdom. And so he said, and, well basically, and he was just wanting to get that out of their minds that he's not, he's not here for that. So I'll continue, verse 12. Uh, and so he said, A noble went and went to a distant country to obtain for himself a kingdom. And there's that kingdom word. He's trying to appeal to the people to get them to understand what, like, the reason why he came. And then to return, verse 13. So he called ten of his servants, and he gave them ten manas, one apiece, each equal to a hundred days of wage. And uh, said to them, do business with this until I return. But, but like, notice, notice how he says, do business with this until I return. That is what I was trying to get out earlier <laughs> when I was getting all my words tripped up. Is he, he was, he, you know, the very last thing he said uh, is that um, the Great Commission, you know, where to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And here he was saying, you know, do business with what I have given you. You know, use the gifts and callings that I have given you to go out and reach the people. Reach people and bring more to me. Because originally they were all meant for me. And originally uh, I created them just for me. And just so we can spend time together and actually be one together. Um, so he's, he's, you know, he told them, uh, do business with this until I return. But his citizens, the residents of the new, uh, his new kingdom hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to be, uh, a king over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that these servants to whom he had given the money be called to him that they... Uh, that he might find out what business they had done. This is the parable. This is like um, Jesus is kind of like writing out what the future is going to be like for us at the very end of time when he comes back. You know, he's going to collect all of us Christians and be like, all right, guys, what did you do with like the life that I have given you and all this time that I have given you? <clears throat> and uh, when he returned, uh, sorry, verse 16. The first one came before him and he said, Lord, uh, your minna has made ten more minnas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. 
because you proved yourself faithful and trustworthy in a very little thing. You shall now have authority over ten cities in my kingdom. And I just love, um, <clears throat> keep going on little rabbit trails, but I just love how the scripture kind of, uh, it's like a basket and it intertwines itself. Like you, you have the weaves, weaves of like a basket. You think about that. And it all comes together. <clears throat> and it's the biggest way, easiest way how to discern scripture, like the meaning behind it, and um, actually like see it for what it is and not come up with the, these crazy ideas about, you know, this and that and this and that, and like being tossed to and fro by one doctrine. But you'll notice that Jesus and others will repeat themselves and, throughout different parts of scripture and mention and reference older parts of scripture and it'll all just come together new and old testament and they all reference together and it's it's amazing how you can have all these different i guess testimonies and uh reflections and uh stories about what happened and they all coincide to basically one idea he was saying um, and the reason why I said that is he said, uh, you were faithful in a very little thing and you shall not have authority over 10 cities. You know, that's another scripture, uh, that he said before, uh, if you're faithful in the little things, I'll entrust more to you. Um, I believe that is exactly how it's written. I cannot remember exactly, but anyways, continue on verse 18. The second one came and said, Lord, your minna has made five minas. And he said to him also, and you shall take charge over five cities. Then another came and said, Lord, here's your minna, which I have laid up in a handkerchief for, you, for safekeeping. This is the guy that was saved and he put his light under a lampshade. You know, he put his... Um, he put the light underneath the bed and hid it. He said, <clears throat> I was afraid of you. And I'm sure he was ashamed of him too. Because you're a stern man. You pick up what you did not lay down and you reap what you did not sow. He said to the servant, I will judge and condemn you by your own words, you worthless servant. Did you really know that I am a, I was a stern man, picking up what I did not lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not, at the very least, put my money in the bank? Then on my return, I would at least collect some interest. You know? Then he said to the bystander, Take that minnow away from him and give it to the one who has ten minnows. And then, oh wait, they said to him, Lord, he has ten minnows already. And Jesus explained, I tell you that everyone who has, because he valued the gifts from God, he has used them wisely, more will be given. But to the one who does not have, even what he does has will be taken away. And uh, I just want to look at that because... That's very, very true. You know, if you're not going to use what God gave you, um, yes, there's things present to come, but also, but mainly what we're focused on uh, is the things that are future in, the, in heaven. And I can very well see a lot of Christians fall into this rut of, well, I hid, I hid the manna, you know, and God's just going to be like, take everything away that you had you're gonna barely make it into heaven and I'm gonna give this to the guy who did uh, who did the best and he's gonna receive what you uh, decided to you know keep and not uh, not do anything with and you know I believe that's for things um, in natural and today but uh, it's mainly for you know heaven the kingdom of heaven Another thing I wanted to go over too was, um, yes, of course, being faithful in little things. I'm just reading some of the notes that I have written down. Uh, but 
also get this uh, mentality of the kingdom of heaven. And this is something that I kind of teach myself and try to grasp myself is this idea that we're not here forever. And this world just kind of means not too much. And we're here to go and get as many people as we can to save them. And then we'll be able to go back one day into heaven and, you know, essentially cash in all of our <laughs> rewards. It's kind of weird to think of it like that. Um, but that is... Um, that's where our mind should be is to seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything that you could ever worry about on this earth will be added unto you you know you, you'll be taken care of um, you know actually we'll just read the whole thing over in Luke 12 uh, 31 let's flip over to that uh, or should we read more of it? Um, let's go to verse 24. It's not the whole thing, but we'll, we'll start somewhere. Uh, consider the ravens, for they neither sow seed nor reap the corn. Uh, they have no storehouses or barns, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the, board, the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add an hour to his uh, lifespan? So, if you are not able to do a very little thing, why are you worried about the rest? Consider the lilies and the wildflowers, how they are grown. They neither labor nor spin. And yet, I tell you, not even Solomon, uh, not even Solomon, oh, in all his glory and splendor, uh, dressed himself like one of these. But if this is how God clothes the grass, which is in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Hmm. <laughs> so as for you, do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, nor have any anxious thoughts or an unsettled mind. And we hear those kinds of things a lot, especially in the body of Christ. And um, I feel like a lot of us are not, we just kind of, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Um, but, so we really got to pay attention to this. But seek, uh, my Bible has like little brackets, uh, but strive for and actively seek his kingdom these things will be given to you as well you know the clothes um everything that you know you would need to eat or want you know um, jesus talks about you know giving you the things that you desire your heart's desire um and it's getting your mind off of chasing those things and instead just chasing him um that's that's where we need to be just chasing him and stop chasing the things of this world and do not be afraid nor anxious little flock for if your father's good it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom man and he's saying you know sell all your possessions and give to the poor provide your money belts for yourselves mm. that they uh, that do not wear out an unfailing and inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief come near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that's where I want to end it today. Basically, that's... Yeah, we, we don't... Our treasure is... is Him. And we got to make this very real. And it's not just something... This is this isn't some kind of religion, guys. This isn't some kind of um, ritual or thing that we follow. This is something that's um, real, 
and genuine and we just need to seek after him and we're going to learn more about that uh, in the future videos what that looks like and learn more about him because that's what it's all about anyways guys this has uh, been an amazing little bible study uh, you guys have an amazing day I just thank you for taking the time to watch the video and um, hopefully God spoke to you about something um, because this was his idea so <laughs> um, anyways my best bro is Jesus you guys have an amazing day again all right I'm out